This is Yuval Noah Harari. He's Jewish, referred to as a public intellectual, historian, and professor of the Department of History at Hebrew University in Jerusalem. He's the author of the blockbuster book Sapiens, which has sold over 45 million copies. He says the book explains what it means to be human. You're going to hear him talk about human beings being like gods, which was Satan's first lie to Eve, about his homosexuality, his strong belief in evolution, about Jesus and his teachings, and even about the resurrection of Christ. Though he's an atheist, he will quote the Bible, continually refer to scripture, talk of God as the petty lawgiver, and speak with excitement about the possibility of artificial intelligence replacing the Bible with a new and better version. You'll hear him say that we have the power to create new life forms, which is just not true. The most intelligent scientist on the face of the earth can't create a grain of sand from nothing, let alone any form of life. God alone creates life, man destroys it. Tell us what you see and why it's difficult perhaps to preview the future at this time. Well, we are now almost like gods in terms of our powers of creation and destruction. We now have the power to create new life forms, but also to destroy much of life on Earth, including ourselves. Instead of uniting in order to face these common challenges to our species, we are dividing, we are fighting each other uh, more and more. The evolution of life on Earth took something like four billion years, four billion years to reach these plants and to reach us, human beings. So ChatGPT and all these wonders, they are the amoebas of the AI world. What would T-Rex look like? It's the first technology ever that can create new ideas. Gutenberg printed the Bible in the middle of the 15th century, the, the, the printing press printed as many copies of the Bible as Gutenberg instructed it, but it did not create a single new page. It had no ideas of its own about the Bible. Is it good? Is it bad? How to interpret this? How to interpret that? AI can create new ideas, can even write a new Bible. Throughout history, religions dreamt about having a book written by a superhuman intelligence. In a few years, there might be religions that are actually correct, that just think about a religion whose holy book is written by an AI. That could be a reality in a few years. And you have this discussion for, you know, for, for thousands of years about what humans really are. Are they immaterial soul or an immaterial mind? Are, are they embodied beings, embodied entities? This was a major philosophical topic that you see, say, in ancient Christianity, this discussion that Jesus and the first Christians, influenced by Jewish traditions, don't be deceived by this man, that is not true. They were not influenced by Jewish traditions. They were influenced by the scriptures. Jesus flouted the empty tradition. He called the religious leaders hypocrites, saying that they strained at the gnat and swallowed the camel. He said that by their tradition, they nullified the word of God. They believed very firmly that humans are bodies, which is why Christ rises in the body. He's resurrected in the body. And when Christ initially talks about the kingdom of heaven, he means the kingdom of heaven on earth. He tells his followers that there'll be this perfect kingdom here on earth, you know, with trees and stones and people. This is what he's telling his mostly secular audience, that what Jesus taught had nothing to do with God or of heaven. The kingdom of God is about trees and stones and people. In other words, don't be concerned about heaven, Let's be concerned about this earth. That's how to get the admiration and the attention of a world that's worried about the future. And now listen as he says that any talk about sin and heaven didn't come from Jesus, but it came because of a form of Christianity that drifted away from his original teachings. Thank God we've got the scriptures to refute his lies. Over time, under the influence especially of Platonic philosophy, Christianity drifted away 
from this view of humans as embodied and placed greater and greater emphasis on the immaterial soul or mind. It imagined that the body is, is dirty, the body is animalistic, the body, there is something wrong with it. And uh, when you die, you are not coming back in the body. Your soul is liberated from the material body and it goes not to a kingdom on, on earth, but to heaven, which is a completely immaterial realm. If you could change one thing in the world by magic today, what would it be? I would change human understanding of, of themselves to place more emphasis on our shared biological reality and less on all the kind of fictional stories that we create with our minds. If we could just let go of these stories for a little while, and again, go back to the level of the body, we would realize that we are all the same. We all of us share the same biology, irrespective of our ideology and religion and whatever. And if we remember that, yeah. and let go a little of our ideological and religious fantasies, that that's the basis to, to create a better world for everybody. And there's the answer for the human dilemma. Get rid of the Bible and its teachings and you solve the problem. So the Christian fantasy became to completely disconnect from the body. And this remained a fantasy for thousands of years. He can't get away from his hatred of the Bible. And there's good reason for this. As you mentioned, I met my husband online um, more than 20 years ago, growing up in a small town in Israel, uh, which was very homophobic society at the time. Mm. Just meeting other people, uh, just meeting guys for dating was very difficult. Mm. <laughs> What's the most important learning of your life? Meditation, to, to observe myself. But again, to observe how my mind constantly creates fictional stories and be able to let go of them for a little while and just be in touch with the reality as it is. The operating system of every human culture in history has always been language. In the beginning was the word. We use language to create mythology and laws, to create gods and money, to create art and science, to create friendships and nations. Gods are also not a biological or physical reality. Gods, too, is something that we humans have created with language by telling legends and writing scriptures. What would it mean for human beings to live in a world where perhaps most of the stories, melodies, images, laws, policies, and tools are shaped by a non-human, alien intelligence, already today, in games like chess, no human can hope to beat a computer. What if the same thing happens in art, in politics, economics, and even in religion? In future, we might see the first cults and religions in history whose revered texts were written by a non human intelligence. And of course, religions throughout history claimed that their holy books were written by a non-human intelligence. This was never true before. This could become true very, very quickly with far-reaching consequences. The far-reaching consequences would be a new Bible written by artificial intelligence. Let's see if we can guess what that Bible would be like. It would remove the exclusivity of Christ, the offense of salvation by grace alone, any reference to sin, righteousness, and judgment, and of course, especially any condemnation of homosexuality. It would change the revealed nature of God into an idol that has no sense of justice, no moral dictate, and therefore will not punish sinful behavior. I asked AI the following question. If you were going to rewrite the Bible to suit all religions, what would you remove? This is what it said. Remove exclusivist language. Emphasize universal values. And 
incorporate teachings from other religious texts, avoid specific doctrinal statements, acknowledge multiple paths. The new AI tools would have an immense influence on human opinions and on our worldview. People, for instance, may come to use, are already coming to use, uh, a single AI advisor as a one-stop oracle. And as the source for all the information they need. No wonder that Google is terrified, and for a good reason. Why bother searching yourself when you can just ask the oracle to tell you anything you want? You don't need to search. So for thousands of years, we humans basically lived inside the dreams and fantasies of other humans. We have worshipped gods, we pursued ideals of beauty, we dedicated our lives to causes that originated in the imagination of some human poet or prophet or politician. He just can't stay away from his enmity towards God. It's always there, disguised among a list of other things. For thousands of years, prophets and poets and politicians have used language and storytelling in order to manipulate and to control people and to reshape society. I think that fake news have been with us for thousands of years. Um, just think of the Bible. Evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design. More people were killed and persecuted in the name of the religion of love, Christianity, than in the name of any other idea in human history. That's just not true. The Encyclopedia of Wars states that there have been over 1,700 wars in human history, with only 7% classified as religious wars. And most of that 7% were Islamic wars. Why would he say something that just isn't true? The religion of love turned out to be the most intolerant religion in human history. You uh, talk about in 2121 20, Lessons this notion that, that God is, is dead. And is there a place for that, that notion of God or, or religion to capture and secure like this, this notion of meaning in life or purpose in life? One God is the cosmic mystery. We don't understand why there is something rather than nothing. Why the Big Bang happened. What is human consciousness? There are many things we don't understand about the world. And some people choose to call these mysteries by the name of God. That's one kind of God. I have no problem at all with this God. I like it very much. <laughs> Here now is the basis for his atheism. It's rooted in idolatry. God to him is nothing more than a mystery. And that nebulous mystery doesn't hold him morally accountable for his sin. And no sinner has a problem with such a non-existent God. But he's offended by the biblical revelation of God, blasphemously calling him a petty lawgiver. Then there is another God, which is the petty lawgiver. The chief characteristic of this God, we know a lot of extremely concrete things about that God. We know what he thinks about sexuality. And then like a magician, swapping one card for another, they will take out the mystery God in place, the, uh, the, the, the petty lawgiver, and you end up with something strange like, because we don't understand the Big Bang, women must dress with long sleeves and men shouldn't have sex together. <laughs> Mingling biblical instructions for female modesty with a law that forbids homosexuality may get a giggle from Google, but he will still have to face that law on Judgment Day. What's AI? AI stands for artificial intelligence. Are you afraid of it? I wouldn't say I'm afraid of it. But, uh, you know, portrayed in media, there's a sense that AI sometime in the future will take over and basically develop some kind of sentient mind and run the world. Is that scary? It's scary, but I think we can prevent it. How do we prevent it? Double down, regulate it, because it seems to be, it's especially mainstream nowadays, because all over TikTok, Instagram, you see, like, people advertising AI uh, up and about. Are you afraid of the future? No. Have you ever heard of the Antichrist? Yeah. 
in the Bible it says he's gonna come first and people will be deceived to thinking that Christ, you know, the Savior has actually come to, you know, save us. But in the Bible it says, no, he's gonna come down on a white horse from the clouds. That's what the Bible actually says. So are you a Christian? Yes, I am. So is that why you're not afraid of the future? Yeah, because I believe we have to be prepared for everything that has to come. And I believe that we have already been given our guidelines in the Bible, especially of preparing for the end times and not being deceived, especially by the Antichrist. Real quick, here are three things to help you grow in your faith. The Living Waters Podcast, The Evidence Study Bible, 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith, and much more. The Starter Kit, four of the most popular gospel tracks, available at livingwaters.com. If you'd like to know how to share the Christian message with homosexuals without compromising and without offending them, you've got to watch this. You can watch it right now by clicking up to your left.